Well, I am finally able to record something today. It is so late, and I've been dying to uh, to get this out all day. Um, I am greatly heartened by what I've been seeing on, on Twitter since this morning and, and throughout the day, uh, this news about what was coming out of Oregon. Uh, it was apparently some kind of pro-Trump, stop-the-steal type of rally uh, going on in both Salem and Portland, I believe, probably other parts of Oregon and I'd imagine other parts of the country. But the, you know, Oregon is where um, you really got some buzz going because there, uh, the, uh, you know, the pro-Trump protesters came you know, they had their Trump flags, they had their American flags, they had their Gadsden flags, and something that you also see at a lot of these, uh, you know, right-wing events are a thin blue line flags, pro-police attire, um, which, eh, you know, I personally always find kind of cringy, but, you know, it's something that you have with the with the, the right-wing crowds because, you know, they're pro-law and order and all this stuff. And so, they, you know, they hate Antifa, and the cops supposedly are protecting us from Antifa. And Black Lives Matter. Although, <laughs> over the summer, uh, as Antifa and Black Lives Matter were rioting, the police didn't do a whole lot to stop them. Um, and that made a lot of right-wingers, uh, it, it gave them pause, although overall they were still you know, more pro-police because of it than not, because they saw how bad the Antifa people were. But, um, since that subsided a bit, um, and also because of the lockdowns, uh, there's, you get a bit more right-wingers who are uh, a bit more skeptical uh, of the police authority. Um, they've been being massaged in that direction um, for, for quite a few months now. And for quite a few people, we saw them snap yesterday um, when they felt that the police were doing more to protect Antifa and to, you know, uh, sort of uh, restrict their rights. Um, they they kind of a few of them had you know they, it was the last straw for them to where they said you know what we're done we're not backing the blue anymore f the blue f the cops f the police and this to me is good progress um because it is it, it's, it's dangerous if you're the movement that's supposed to be pro pro freedom and pro human liberty and in and, and rights and stuff like this if um you are um unwaveringly uh supportive of the enforcers of tyranny. It becomes very hard to oppose tyranny if you're saying that, oh, cops are always great um, and that they're just doing their jobs. Well, if their job is to do bad things to you, um, that's not doing a very good job. <laughs> that's a bad job that you want them not to do. Uh, and um, there's also a viral video out of Quebec um, where the police come into a home of a family. Apparently they were snitched on by their neighbor. They had too many family members in their house. And so the police came and snatched away their family so that they would get down to whatever the legal limit was for people that you're allowed to have in your house. And this family is, you know, screaming and trying to hold on to their loved one and help keep them in the house. And the cops are ripping them away. And of course, the cops are not wearing masks. So this is, I'm sure, very safe. You know, they're, they're uh, you know, heavily breathing and probably spitting all over these people all in the name of public health um and this guy was dragged around you know was dragged away you know thrown down on the ground and uh had to cuff him and ezra levant uh, i saw on twitter who is uh you know he's you know a prominent um right-wing media guy from canada um you know he's like hey i'm done with this whole back the blue stuff i've had enough of this i've seen enough and in his, you know, his reply to that, he's like, you know what, um, I'm going to be smart. I'm not going to go too hard against the cops because if I do that, I'll basically get killed, which is smart. Um, some people interpreted that as a retraction of his earlier thing, saying, oh, no, look, he's backing to back to back. He's, you know, he's returned to his back to blue position. He's saying, oh, well, let's attack the, the politicians who are ordering them, giving them their orders rather than the people who are taking the orders. Um, but I thought he was being kind of... Um, kind of sarcastic when he said that because he's saying you know hey this is canada we don't really have much freedom we don't have freedom of speech so i can't probably can't criticize the, i probably don't have as much latitude to criticize cops as i do politicians so i'm going to focus on the politicians and also i think he was saying that hey if you resist the police um and say hey i'm not going to do what you're what you're telling me to do they'll kill you <laughs> which is true so i i thought that that was um that was a very uh um, enlightened statement coming from someone like Ezra Levant. It's 
so I hope now, um, you know, with uh, with Trump out of office, you're going to see a lot more people on the right waking up um, to the evils of the state uh, more broadly, um, because I, I think that you know, f certainly for a lot of people, they feel safer with the government when their guy's at the top. I, you know, it's a pretty commonly accepted fact at this point that Barack Obama neutered uh, the anti-war left. Uh, the left was very anti-war and skeptical of the government interfering uh, in, in foreign, uh, you know, affairs during the Bush administration. They had seen the disasters of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, and they said, hey, we don't want to repeat this again. But then once Obama got in there, they felt like, well, Obama wouldn't do anything bad. I mean, he's Obama. Obama opposed the Iraq war. He said, we're going to get out of Iraq. And supposedly in 2010, the last troops left Iraq. I remember watching Geraldo Rivera on the border with Kuwait, and he was standing there with his microphone. He was going, look, here's the last, uh, um, here's the last uh, of the troops. They're just coming across the border now. Well, here we are um, 10 years later, and guess what? There's still American troops in Iraq. And on top of that, Obama started a bunch of new wars <laughs> during his time. He started more wars than George W. Bush did. And so uh, with Trump being in office, uh, you're going to naturally have the right be more docile and less um, confrontational directly with the government itself. And even with that, they were still, I think, I, I still think that they, that they showed some signs of resisting uh, the lockdowns and things. Even in states with Republican governors, people seem to be quite contemptuous, um, and uh, the, the lockdowns have been kind of decentralized. It's not like the White House has been issuing edicts saying, okay, everybody stay in your homes. It's not like Trump was the one directly putting them out of business. But uh, with Trump out of there, with Biden in there, I think it'll be very easy uh, for people to, com to associate all of these pains, all of their angst with the government as a whole. It won't be fragmented in that, you know, oh, it's just these Democrat governors or whatever, um, or it's just the Democratic president. They'll, you know, they will be, um, you know, or, you know, and I think they'll be very open to blaming the Republicans, too, because, you know, your average Trump supporter doesn't really care about uh, if somebody's a Republican or not. That doesn't necessarily make them good. Uh, these people like Trump. So you've got, if you've got cops that are perceived as helping Antifa and BLM and hurting uh, the Trump people, well, then those cops are bad. I was listening to Lex Friedman's podcast today with uh, Michael Malice, and Malice had a very um, excellent quote that I'm going to steal, although I'm not stealing it, I guess, since I'm, I'm crediting him, and Malice doesn't believe in intellectual property, thankfully. Um, he, he said that, you know, the mainstream tends to view Obama or Trump as the river, uh, whereas in reality, Trump is the dam. And what he means by that is that uh, they thought that Trump was the one ushering in all this chaos and that this chaos was just flowing and tearing up the, the banks and eroding the banks, um, threatening uh, the elites with their waterfront property, um, you know, sucking and risking that they could be sucked into the current and carried downstream. Whereas in reality, Trump was actually a dam holding back the river <laughs> and that there was just that much stuff coming through um, uh, anyway. And so with Trump out of the way, Things are not going to calm down. They're only going to escalate. Um, or as I have put it in the past, Trump is not the problem. If you see this unrest in the country as a problem, he is a symptom. And I think that's the problem with a lot of these, um, with a lot of these, uh, uh, it's hard to say if they're on the left or not, but I guess your, your centrist reactionaries who have sprung up in reaction to Trump, and all they do, everything that they do, is a reaction to something that Trump does. They see Trump as the origin um, of, of everything. They see him as the center of the political universe, whereas Trump himself is a reaction. The, to vote for Donald Trump was a reactionary action. They were reacting against the domination of the establishment uh, in this country. And something else that, uh, that Tim Pool has been discussing a lot lately that I'm very skeptical of um, is this idea that because of um, everything that we're going on here with the with the with the right being angry at the cops because of the lockdowns and anti fun the left and BLM already hating the cops for their own reasons and of course hating the democratic establishment that with Trump out of the way you could see um, a sort of alliance between uh, your populist left and populist right uh, against uh, the established order. I do not think that there would ever be some kind of alliance between these two groups. Uh, 
but I do think that perhaps each acting in their own self-interest um, could be working towards similar ends. Uh, I don't think that they would ever work in concert with one another since they see, uh, in their view, the the other is the establishment. They, they see it as, they, they, they think, they have a binary way of thinking. In other words, uh, the right sees, uh, you know, the vapid, ordinary right winger sees Joe Biden as a communist, as a, is a, uh, the Trojan horse for socialism. That was the official Trump campaign slogan. They see Antifa as sort of the modern uh, Ku Klux Klan, and you know, all this might not be common uh, a common way of thinking um, throughout all of America, but within Republican circles, um, that reminds people of the KKK because the KKK is you know was seen as the militant wing of the Democratic Party, and so now Antifa is the new militant wing of the Democratic Party. That's how they they look at it, uh, and so I don't think that um, you know your average right winger uh, could could um, uh, think in a way in which it, they see Antifa as their ally against the establishment. Some smarter ones might, but at this point, the average right winger, that's not going to happen. And the same is true of your average, um, you know, psychopath Antifa or BLM supporter uh, who views anyone who's not out riding with them as a fascist. Anyone who has an American flag, you know, let alone a, uh, a uh, Gadsden flag or a rebel flag, they are neo-Nazis, literally. Um, the entire Republican Party is, uh, is, a, is a Nazi party. And so I think that this idea of the populist left, populist right versus the establishment is, is something that, can, that is only conceived of uh, by, by you know, a small portion uh, of us in the population who, in, you know, in my view, have enough sense to see reality. And so there will be no de jure alliance between these two, these two factions, but we could see uh, a, a sort of de facto um, inadvertent alliance. Because with the Democratic establishment um, in control, uh, or as well the Republican establishment, the establishment in general, um, essentially with Trump out of the picture um, and no real far left person uh, leading the Democratic Party, uh, you're going to have um, your, you know, all, you know, both populist factions very upset with the government. BLM, of course, still trumpeting their whole, oh my gosh, the Biden-Harris administration will not speak to us. They won't return our phone calls or let us in on their racial roundtables. And keep in mind, Black Lives Matter started under Barack Obama. So if they, <laughs> if they were mad at Obama, or if they were mad during the Obama administration, hell yeah, they're gonna be mad during the Biden administration. So I think that we're going to see a year of unrest, um, and you know perhaps more than that. But you know this year is not going to be quiet. Um, we're going to, uh, I, I think, probably see the official kickoff um, to uh, this this very crazy this next crazy year. You know after last year and the year before and the year before that, um, we're going to see that kickoff on January sixth when. Uh, well, I'll, I'll discuss this tomorrow, but there is uh, supposedly now uh, a group of at least 10 or 11 senators um, that is going to present their objections to the Electoral College. And there's, an, there's some interesting stuff in there that I want to get into in depth, so I'll save that for tomorrow. But my um, one of my many strategies that I thought up in my head, uh, you know, way back when, for how to bring about, you know, a, a peaceful... Um, uh, decentralized revolution or revolution of decentralization, some way of, of wrestling power away from Washington and returning it back to, to smaller communities, um, was, uh, you know, to accelerate through the total domination um, of our political system by the establishment. That's why in 2016, I was quite, you know, all right with the idea of Hillary Clinton winning because I thought she was so awful that there would be, a, you know, a, a, a general revulsion of her and her entire administration that would help radicalize the population, both left and right, against the establishment. Hillary Clinton, um, of course, um, did not win, but the, the, uh, the population was still radicalized, interestingly enough. Um, people were energized by Trump on the right. Uh, they were radicalized against the Republican establishment, uh, and people on the left, um, you know, leaving aside the, 
the awful, awful liberals um, who are just, you know, reactionary anti-Trump types. Uh, the far left, um, I think, made great gains uh, over the last four years, as seen as cul- you know, which culminated in the Antifa BLM riots of 2020. And so now we're in an even better position than 2016 for the establishment to come in, um, take total control of the government, try and suppress all opposition, and and, and thus provoke some kind of a revolt, which is you know would lead ultimately to. Um, to Washington losing its grip over the country, and, and more uh, local, uh, localized uh, jurisdictions or polities uh, taking, you know, taking control of those powers, taking those powers back. And in uh, also, you have the added bonus of with all these lockdowns and stuff, people being radicalized even against their own local government. Uh, which is a good thing because then that means that they're going to try and overthrow their their local uh, establishment uh, and uh, you know get people who are more on their side in power, or at least resist those who are already in power, um, and uh, you know and try and cripple them a bit too. Um, you know a peaceful uh, you know revolution against lockdowns would be a good thing too, and that wouldn't lead to any real serious change in the structure of the government. It would just lead to uh, the local government saying, you know, hey, we can't enforce these lockdowns anymore, these mask mandates, because people just refuse to obey them. Um, no matter, you know, and they're saying, you know, know what? We don't care what the cops say. We're going to do what we want. That's a very positive um, instinct uh, within people that should be cultivated uh, and, it, you know, it should be encouraged. Because if they're willing to disobey the cops when they're wrong, in that case, they're going to be willing to disobey the cops uh, when they're wrong in other cases, like when it comes to gun control or drug laws or things like that. And so I think that there is a distinct chance at this point that human liberty sees a renaissance in this country um, as, as people simply refuse to comply and, uh, you know, as the meme goes, become ungovernable. So with that said, if you gained anything of value out of this video, I'd appreciate you clicking that like button and sharing this video. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe because I do upload every day and I'd hate to have you miss one. So I'll see you folks back here tomorrow.